I come from uh, Oregon. I probably told some of you that before. That's where I come from. And when I got out of school there by a thread, I went. I got this ride down to Santa Rosa, California, and that didn't work out at all. So I called my brother. He was living in Austin. He had these friends that were letting him stay on their couch. And I figured they might have a couch that I could stay on. So <laughs> I got this ride to Austin, Texas, and got to this address my brother uh, gave me. And this guy introduced himself as Bonehead. <laughs> And uh, I went in and started asking around. Turned out they, they didn't have the second couch. They just had the one couch uh, for my brother. But they knew, they knew where there was a party. And I thought, well, that's good enough. So uh, we all got in this car and we drove across town to this party where all these people were standing around drinking. And there was this guy in the corner of the party. His name was Trog. And he was six foot eight, 300 pound guy. And he had a beer in each hand, and he was telling stories, and people would gather around him laughing. They weren't really funny stories, but he's 6'8", 300 pounds, so I went over there and started laughing, too, you know? And then uh, towards the end of the party, when everybody drizzled out a little bit, uh, I got to talking with Trog. Turned out him and his friends, they, they did have an extra couch that somebody could stay on. So I went over to their house and stayed for like three months, you know? And we would, uh, most of the time at night, we would sit around and listen to whatever Trog said we were going to listen to on the radio, you know. Drink beer, or whatever. And, uh, one night we were sitting there listening, and uh, he put on this CD of this guy I'd never heard by uh, Jerry Jeff Walker, who you might have heard of. Yeah. He, uh, if you had never heard of him, his main thing people know him for is the song Mr. Bojangles, but he's got a ton of great songs. And uh, I'd never heard that kind of music before, and I got so excited, I told my friend, I said, this is it for me, you know. He said, well, he's playing at this place called Green Hall. So that Friday night, me and Troll got in this truck, and we drove down to Green Hall to see Jerry Jeff, and he come out kind of like tonight, like I am with just a guitar and sang some songs. I thought, shit, I could do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I went, I got myself a guitar, you know, and I started practicing, and a few months later, I, I was singing, and uh, uh, I feel like I got all that Jerry Jeff Walker records that they are, I got every single one, and if you're like me, when you get a record, I like to read the inside, the notes and stuff inside. So I was reading in some of his Jerry Jeff Walker records, and it turns out he records most of his stuff in this little town, not really a studio, but a little town called Lukenbach, Texas, that you might remember from that song, Willie and Waylon and the Boys in Lukenbach, Texas. The town itself is actually a beer hall, a post office, a house, a parking meter, and that's the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and Jerry Jeff loved to hang out there, and he had become my hero, and they've had music on Fridays and Saturdays, so I wanted to play there. So I sent my tape over there and tried to get them to call me, and they never did call me. And then one night we were sitting around watching whatever Trog wanted to watch on TV, you know? <laughs> And the phone rings, and this woman says, Hey, this is Large Marge from down in Lukenbach. And our show on Saturday canceled, and we was wondering if you could come fill in. And I got excited, because I've been six or seven months trying to get the show, so I was so excited. My heart's beating. I held the phone and checked with Trog. He said it was okay if we took the gig. <laughs> and that weekend, we all, got, we all got in this old $450 car that I had, and we started driving down the highway towards Lukenbach, Texas. And friends and neighbors, if you've never been to Luke and Bach Toxis, you may never fucking go. Because <laughs> tourists take the signs that point to it to keep in the garage and stuff. So you get out in the desert and there's no signs. And of course, it was just me and all my friends. There's all guys in the car. So we drove about another two and a half hours before we ever pulled over and asked anybody where we was. What? And we, we were on this thing called the Devil's Backbone Highway, right? So we finally pull into this place uniquely named the Devil's Backbone Tavern. And we go in, and now all the guys say, I gotta go in, you know? And so I go in there, and it's like one of them bars, like everyone's drinking beer, and they're like, say, 20 people in there, and they may say 17 teeth total in the whole place. <laughs> and I'm not a good fighter or very good at protecting myself at all, you know? So I thought, well, this, could, this may not work out. And, uh... <laughs> So I saw behind the bar there was this one older woman. She looked like she was in her 80s, and she hun kind of hunched over like I remember my grandma started to do. She kind of had, she had curly white hair, and she's all, I thought, well, I could take her. So I went over, <laughs> over there. I go up to her. I says, man, we're trying to find Luke and Bach, and we're so lost. And I swear this is true. She turned around really slow. 
I'll never forget it. She turned around, she looked up at me, and she kind of smiled. She says, fuck Lukenbach. Drink with us. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> and at the uh, end of the night, you know, we had got our guitars out, and we were singing and everything, and drank a whole bunch of beer, and I went up to her. They called her Miss Virgie. So I said, Miss Virgie, how much do we owe you for the beer? And she says, you don't owe me nothing, boy. So we started, after, after that, every Friday after that, we would go down and <laughs> sing for her, you know. <laughs> By the end of the summer, I had gotten an aura and I made this song up, Miss Virgie, wherever she is tonight, I don't know, but I play this for it. It features the hottest guitar work that I could do. <laughs> Not this part. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Miss Verge attended bar to shack out in the hills. Never made an old money boy, but it paid up all of her bills. She must have been 80 years old, but her heart was warm and her beer was cold. And she'd give away more than she ever sold, smiling all the time. I used to sing off in the corner. Every Friday night To a loud crowd of cowboys Bikers and barroom fights They'd be drinking beer and carrying on Not a one of them was listening to one of my songs But old Miss Virgie was singing along She said she knew them all by heart And then one night after closing She poured me up a beer And she said, come over here and sit down, you little shit I got something you ought to hear she said, life isn't easy getting through Everybody's gonna make things tough on you But I can tell you right now, if you dig what you do They will never get you down She said, life's too short to worry She said, life's too long to wait Well, it's too short not to love everybody Life's too long to hate I meet a lot of men haggling for naggle all the time Trying to save a nickel, maybe make a dime She said, not me, boy, no sorry You know, I ain't got the time it is. Virgie, I guess it's probably been almost 18 years Been bumming around this country Singing my songs for tips and beers Now the nights are long and the traveling's tough Hotels are weird and the pay sucks But I can't take what I do enough It never, ever gets me down I say life is too short to worry I say life's too long to wait well, It's too short not to love everybody Life's too Long to hate, I meet a lot of men haggling for naggle all the time. Trying to save a nigga, maybe make a dime. She said, Not me, more no serene. No, I ain't got the time. <laughs> I told you I played there every Friday night for the rest of the summer, you know. And there was this one guy that used to sit in the corner every Friday night and listen to me play. He'd sit over there drinking beer, hogging like three or four teeth all to himself. <laughs> and one night at the end of the summer, he come up to me. We hadn't talked the whole summer, you know. And he comes up to me and says, Boy, I've been watching you. And I remember I said, uh, you know, I've noticed that and I wanted to thank you. I just, and he goes, oh, don't thank me, son. I think you suck. <laughs> and, and I understood what he meant when he said I sucked. But he wanted to go on and on about it. <laughs> so he did. He said that him and his brothers was big fans of Eddie Van Halen and the Eddie Van Halen band. He said, last summer we drove into Austin to see Eddie Van Halen and the Eddie Van Halen van. Whole damn concert, Eddie V was on the top of his car. He said, you play the same three chords the whole fucking night, it sucks. So when I come up with this song, I thought of old Jerry Jeff, of course, and I thought of my buddy Trog. 
Mm -hmm. Willie and Waylon and the boys. Eddie Van Halen and the Eddie Van Halen band. <laughs> but most of all, I thought about that guy and his brothers. And that's when I come up with this part. Eat your heart out, you inbred some bitch. 